What's going on guys, but it's Matt, you wouldn't have the video, so we're gonna be going in depth into the Division today. So the Division 1 is a great game, new experience into third person shooting. It's based off, the landscape is based off New York, which is amazing. And I like the graphics, the fact that it looks exactly like New York is, and it just, like, I feel like I'm actually in New York, like, playing, but, like, actually in the air. It feels so realistic, and it's amazing. The fact that you get to play with your friends as well makes it a greater experience to not be alone and talking to yourself or killing people by yourself. You get to work as a team, and it's, it's ten times more as fun when you're playing with your friends. Just advice. But today, we're going to be talking about multiple things that I've seen in the division and uh, encountered with. So today we're going to be talking about skills first and the skills that I've encountered are the medical skills which one is a pulse radius which pulses around the area and you get to see either hostile or non-hostile enemies. Non-hostile enemies are the good people which usually will appear uh, white. Hostile people are the people who are e or enemies and they will usually appear red. Also in the medical area, we have a skill called First Aid, which helps revive you and your teammates. It's a grenade kind of launcher that shoots health towards you or your teammates. In the tech area, we have a grenade that shoots at enemies and fires a large blast radius, not only hurting one enemy, but if there are other enemies around that one enemy, it will get all of them at once. So it's a grenade that shoots a long blast radius, which is amazing and it's very useful for trying to kill a large group of people. The other is in the security area where we have the shield where you're able to protect yourself and the shield also has its own health and if destroyed you cannot use it for a while but you can constantly use it unlimitedly unless it's destroyed. Those skills are the only four skills that we could use in the beta which kind of sucks. I wanted to see the second tech ability and the second security ability. Next we're going to be going into the inventory. So the inventory, you have your guns, you have your armor, you have all that. Your guns, you have a first, sec you have a primary, you have a secondary, and you have your pistol, and then you have your mods. Your mods are your attachments that you can add to your gun to make it more powerful, fire rate increase, and all that good stuff to help with the sight, to help with the reload speed, everything, which is extremely good if you want your gun to be more powerful. And there are different rankings and guns if you guys don't know. First is uh, Warren, second is standard, third is specialized, uh, fourth is supreme, and last is high end. High end is the strongest or the best quality guns you can get in the game. Uh, they go from blank, they go from white color to blue, to, they go from white color to green to blue to purple and to gold or yellow for last. You can call it gold or yellow if you want, but I consider it gold because it makes it kind of has like a destiny feeling to it, but let's not go into that. Also, you have your armor, which helps you get, become stronger, and if you're getting shot at, you don't die as quick as if you have weak armor. Your armor will increase. Your armor also follows the uh, standard, specialized, supreme, or high end. They all, each gun, armor, or pistol you have are all categorized in the worn standard, specialized, supreme, and high end ranking. So also around the area, in the store, in the story area, and inside the dark zone, which is an enemy. It was a, also in the dark zone, which is a place where you could face NPCs that are stronger and also other players that are in the game. Dark zone is a PvP sort of place where you can kill enemies and get a lot of XP from that and get a lot of nice new armor, which is much better than the armor you get in the story. Once to the contaminated areas which are in the story and the dark zone. Contaminated areas are places where it's basically contaminated stuff which you can obtain and you have to be a certain ranking. They some they, For some reason they locked it inside the beta and the first day of the beta they had it open but as the days went on they some reason locked it and no one could actually get anything in the contaminated area for some odd reason. If you have, if you're a certain ranking, you have to go in the contaminated area, open one of the boxes that they have, and able to get contaminated goods that are very, very <laughs> that are very, very good for you and your character and your teammates. So going into the dark zone, the ranking for the dark zone has its own ranking. In the store, you have your own ranking, and in the dark zone, you have your own ranking. Eat both you get from killing enemies and surviving, basically, and obtaining and doing missions 
that are in both the Dark Zone and the story. In the beta, your rank can go, can go as high as 8 in the story in the story area, and in the Dark Zone, you can go as high as 12 max, which is pretty good. And the fact that in the beta, when you were level 8 in the story mode, when you went inside the Dark Zone, you can only be paired up with level 8s. I think they made that for a certain reason, so you cannot kill any level 1s that can go in the Dark Area. Is That would be completely unfair. I see where they're going there, but I feel as if it's a problem because if they're... If there's only one level 8 inside the entire, and, or maybe 4 or 5 level 8s inside the game that just started, there's not going to be a lot of people in the area, so I feel as if they should make the game more open based and I'll, everyone can go inside no matter what level they are. Last but not least, the thing that you'll find in the dark zone, which is the best place you want to go to transport your contaminated goods from the dark zone to the story area to the base operations, is the extraction point. The extraction points are places where you can call an extraction and a helicopter will come. The problem is the helicopter comes in a minute, so you have to guard yourself up, ready for any NPCs or enemies to, or player enemies to come towards you. And either they could be enemies or they could not be enemies. They could be people that kindly want to put their stuff in the helicopter as well, or they could be people that are trying to steal your stuff because they know that you have contaminated goods. So you have to be cautious of where you're going with this extraction. Always be aware of your surroundings when you're making an extraction because people can kill you from far away or can, can uh, come out of nowhere and attack you and steal your goods before it's on the air, uh, before it's on the helicopter to the base of operations where your stash is. But that's it guys for today. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this in-depth division video. Uh, I will be doing more of this. Uh, for other games, and uh, I hope it turns out. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like if you did. Comment down below if any other questions you guys would like to leave down in the comment section about the division. I'll be sure to answer them. Share this video as many people as possible, guys. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And that's pretty much it in the video, guys. Blaze Sunny out. Everyone stay fire. Peace. Uh, everyone knows Lotion. Everyone knows what the fucking ladder is. So put them together, and you get my cabin. So the reason we started with the ladder is because when I say Someone decided to put a freaking ladder in my bed. Not just one ladder, I'm sorry. Three ladders. And you know how heavy these freaking ladders were that? And I was in the top bunk. That means I had to use all my strength to lift it up.